So many things we care about in our day-to-day -day lives are intimately tied to our knowledge of carbon. Carbon is the element that's the basis of life. It's the element that's the basis of energy. And new materials are tied to carbon. Health, the environment, climate. Understanding carbon at a fundamental level is critical to the health and well-being of society. And deep carbon is an important part of that story that we just don't know very much about. It's carbon in the full system of the Earth. Not just the near surface environment, but all the way to the very center of the planet. So the Deep Carbon Observatory is a decade-long effort, 10 years to study the nature of carbon. The Deep Carbon Observatory asks big questions. How much carbon is there? What forms does it take? How does it move? And what are the origins of carbon? We have a thousand collaborators from around the world, all coming together with a common set of questions and a common set of goals. This is a kind of integrated, cross-disciplinary project that simply hasn't been tackled before. We are halfway through this wonderful decadal effort. Some of the most amazing discoveries of the Deep Carbon Observatory's first five years have to do with deep life, deep microbes some of whom are living miles underground where the temperatures and the pressures seem so extreme and yet the microbes are surviving. The fact that life can survive these extreme deep environments suggests there might be life deep on Mars or on the moons of Jupiter or Saturn or maybe other worlds. And it tells us hints about how life might have arisen because a safe, protected, deep environment where you have nutrients and you have energy, that's all you need. Maybe that's where life began. Another one of the very exciting discoveries is that there are novel forms of carbon and carbon-bearing materials that exist in the planet, and some of them simply do not exist at the surface. We are stabilizing them, making them in the laboratory, and changing their properties so that altogether new technologies could be based on them. So one can take, for example, diamond, so if you could build an electronics industry based on diamond, doped with different elements, you could revolutionize many aspects of technology from communications to lasers to basic electronics. You could build entire computers, for example, in principle, based on carbon. In the last five years, there have been some amazing progress in instruments that just simply didn't exist before. We have new devices for studying gases coming out of volcanoes. We have new ways of studying the very character of the carbon molecules in a finer and finer detail so that we can discriminate where did those molecules come from? How did they form? What temperature were they synthesized? So these are fundamental advances that will go way beyond the study of carbon to all aspects of science and technology. This is discovery science that's leading to applications, that's leading to, in principle, the solution to major societal problems, from climate change to the amount of carbon in the earth that's relevant to energy, to the nature of biological systems, and the extent to which life exists within the earth and the possibility of life elsewhere. The Deep Carbon Observatory is about questions. Questions that we can ask, but also questions that we haven't yet figured out how to ask. And I think one of the most exciting developments for the next five years is the unfolding as we learn more and more about this amazing carbon cycling on Earth. The quantities, the forms, the movements, the origins of carbon, that we can start asking new questions that have never been asked before. We're also creating a whole group of early career scientists, young people, women and men, who are taking on this challenge and making it their own, and they will be the generation that leads beyond five years to the future of scientific exploration.